The primaries are over and the main event is about to begin. Donald Trump goes into his rematch with Joe Biden with a significant advantage. Namely, he doesn't have a running mate like Kamala Harris to drag him down. Vice presidents are not normally the most important thing when it comes to picking your presidential choice in November. But this time, I think there's going to be a, a special focus on the running mates of both of these candidates. A lot of Americans are very unhappy with the idea that we're getting a replay of 2020. They feel like they know Joe Biden, they know Donald Trump, they have some reservations about both of them, which I think is going to mean this time there's more focus on the undercard, more focus on who their running mates are. And unfortunately for Joe Biden, his running mate is already determined. He has Kamala Harris, who performed quite badly in 2020 when it came to the primaries at her own presidential bid. She was picked primarily for identity politics. She was a woman. She helps to also motivate African Americans to identify with the Democratic ticket. And right now, of course, Joe Biden feels like he's really bleeding support when it comes to a lot of traditional Democratic constituencies. He's very worried about shoring up the black vote, the Hispanic vote, and uh, women are one of the few voting blocks that he thinks he can count on. But now he finds in 2024 that he has uh, a running mate who isn't really bringing any additional voters to his ticket. The one thing that he's really getting out of having Kamala on his ticket is the fact that she makes it much harder to get rid of Joe Biden if Democrats wanted to have a coup and replace him, because obviously she's next in line for uh, the presidential nomination if they decide to throw Biden overboard. But she would be even worse in a general election than Joe Biden would be. So Kamala Harris winds up being an insurance policy for Joe Biden. Now, Donald Trump, on the other hand, he has a free choice right now as to his running mate. That means that when we get a rematch from 2020, we're actually going to have a new element, something different on the Republican side of the line. And that's going to play very advantageously to Trump, regardless of what criteria he uses in choosing his running mate. He might decide that he wants to go for a, a woman who will help to balance the deficit he currently has among the women's vote. Uh, and the leading women for his running mate might be Elise Stefanik of New York or Christy Noem of South Dakota as his running mate. He might, on the other hand, choose to go for a larger share of the black vote by choosing someone like Tim Scott from South Carolina as his running mate. Alternatively, he might go for a geographic strategy. And this, I think, would entail picking someone like J.D. Vance from Ohio as his running mate. The advantage for J.D. Vance is that he is someone who, even though Ohio is a deep red state, in neighboring Rust Belt states like Pennsylvania, Vance is well attuned to the interests of less educated and blue collar voters, exactly the kind of constituencies that Trump needed to win in 2016 in order to, make, to become president. And with states like Michigan and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, all battlegrounds in 2024, the difference between success and defeat for Donald Trump may very well depend on once again motivating Rust Belt voters to come out and support him. And J.D. Vance is probably the best bet he has to make that happen.